Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jia. I'm a co-founder of Technical Machine. We make a product called Tessel. It is a small JavaScript-enabled microcontroller. And I was educated as an electrical engineer. Most of my work is in software, and in a cruel twist of fate, I am managing Technical Machine's manufacturing and supply chain. <laughs> so, uh, next slide. So here's Tesla. Uh, basically, we started this working on Tesla because the backgrounds of the three co-founders, we were all web developers, and we found it increasingly hard to get started into hardware. So Tesla, we made it using JavaScript. Uh, this is familiar with what we are used to as primarily node programmers. So here, we've tried, like this is a small script activating a servo. And what happens is you require the packages for Tesla and for the servo, just like in any node app and then you can just actuate the servo using uh, any like, regular JavaScript. So along with Tesla, we make about 14 different modules. This allows us to actually like, communicate with the physical world, such as accelerometers, GPS. Some of these modules are really simple, like the uh, SD card here. That's just an SD card holder slot onto a PCB. Some of them are really complicated. Um, that's this, the large one is the um, SIM 900 GPRS 2G cell module so that you can make Tesla act as a old cell phone because people wanted that as a retool. Which was a mistake to make with why the 3D user, I, if he had given his credit before, we would not have made that. <laughs> uh, so we managed two different manufacturing locations and two different supply lines. Tesla is manufactured in Massachusetts, while the 14 models we have are all done in, in China. Tesla has a lot of very expensive components, and anything about five cents, I source all the components myself. Um, Shenzhen, everything in China is super cheap, so we primarily let our manufacturers take care of all that. It, our uh, margins aren't really affected that much by it. So, timeline of Tesla, we started working on Tesla in about June last year. Uh, in about July, we started working on the 14 different modules. Uh, and then late September, we launched. Primarily, it was because Tim, another co-founder, and myself had to go back to school. So we didn't want to still engineer while we were in school. It turns out we had to anyway. Uh, so uh, around December, we pushed most of our things into manufacturing. Uh, this is a span of about six months. We did about 15 electrical designs uh, with 1.5 hardware engineers. I was the 0.5. Our dedicated electrical engineer, Eric, was the one. Um, and this is about 2.5 electrical designs per month that we were churning out, um, prototyping, and getting test rigs done. In. So we got really good at that because we had to do it a lot. Um, and here, I'm here to share with you guys what I wish I had known last June before I did all this. So production timeline is mainly split into three things. Engineering, supply chain, and manufacturing. Ideally, you kind of want to start all these in parallel because engineering is really heavily front-loaded with the design, prototyping, testing stage, while sourcing supply chain and manufacturing, you're kind of in the nebulous zone, looking for manufacturers, looking for suppliers. And then in the end, when you're actually pr producing stuff, you're just putting out fires constantly. So I'm going to start first with engineering. Uh, design product test stage. A module takes us about 10 days to do a first pass. It takes longer with Tesla because Tesla was way more complicated. Um, in, this, in these 10 days, we take about one to three days to find reference design and reference schematics based off of some data sheets. Do a design review, uh, send it off to the PCB manufacturer, we get back our boards in three days, do a one day build in our dorm room, and then two to three days test. During that time, we're writing test code as soon as we push it into production, so that as soon as we get it back, we can test it. This means that every subsequent pass we do, a iteration of a module, takes about five days. Um, it takes about one day to redesign, sometimes we just put redesign and building and testing in one day, because as soon as you get back your PCB, Make it, you should be able to tell if it passes or if it fails and what you need to fix. Um, primarily, like the three day time is the bulk of that waiting time. And here, figuring out which product manufacturers you're using will really help you cut down on that time. We use AP circuits primarily because they do three day turns. They're the quickest low cost turn we've ever found um, for higher higher square footage of PCBs. We either go with server circuits and cool and pour or Electro and Sundin. And we recently also started using a PCB assembly shop 
in Kuala Lumpur as well, but it's three weeks and really not too worth it. Uh, test rates. So after you have done the prototyping design phase, long time of testing should actually accumulate in a test rig. Because our product is Tesla, and because Tesla can test Tesla and also all modules, test rigs for us are really easy. Your mileage may vary. <laughs> uh, test plans. Here is a test plan that I wrote in December for a relay module. Uh, things to note are probably have revisions, uh, contact information. Because all of our testing is done in China, uh, I don't assume with proficiency, so I translated everything to Chinese as well. Just because whoever your PM is that you're working with can speak okay English does not mean they understand what you're actually saying. And do not assume that anyone who's actually testing your stuff knows English. Um, we have redundancy among all of our test rigs because Tesla, you can push code to it. All of our Teslas can be used to test any module. It's nice in case something goes down, we still have a bunch more test rigs that can potentially be used to test anything. Um, images, obviously. Set up information and have a really clear pass-fail test case so that they don't have to dig through anything. We primarily use light indicators, either on Tesla or on external PCBs. So while you're starting the design prototyping stage, as soon as you know which primary ICs you're using, you should probably start looking at the supply chain. So sourcing, big global distributors, there are a bunch of them. Octo Park, love you guys, uh, will help you figure out which one's the best. However, don't actually use these things for buying because all prices online are scams and you will get scammed. So find an inside sales guy, you will get way better quotation prices if you are going through internal channels and external channels. Uh, part swaps. As you're doing this, you should also have talked to your manufacturer, gotten quotations. Your manufacturer will recommend that you switch out certain parts that are high in cost. Most of these swaps will be for really, like things that are expensive, but shouldn't be. Like anything passive, connectors, connectors are expensive. It's easy to tell if a connector will work or will fail. Sometimes manufacturers will recommend IC swaps. I do not recommend using any off-brand ICs. That will mess you up. So in the meantime, after you have gotten most of your sourcing down, you should keep on double-checking on supply before you have actually made the purchase order. We ran into an issue recently where we thought we had 10K supply, and then right before manufacturing started, there was zero supply and 26-week lead time. So we cried. <laughs> uh, and then we couldn't find a drop and replacement. There were no drop and replacements, so then we had to do a redesign. Which means that you have to test and retest and then do a new test rig and then retranslate your Chinese test script plan. Uh, while doing this, it's probably at the start also, is like when you're looking for ICs, check the errata documents first, like probably as you're designing. Because manufacturers will make like stupid mistakes. Like accelerometer that we were using, um, they only tested one axis to make sure that their software worked, which means that they were shipping out accelerometers that were not working in two axes. Just like a thing, they didn't really like mention it until half of our tests had failed, and we were like, hey, this is kind of weird, and they're like, oh, yeah, we were making these for like eight years, and two years ago we started testing all the axes. So anything before that is all wrong. Um, Parameters and data sheets will often also lie to you. Like they will have phantom features that the ICs don't really have. Uh, be aware of that. Everything's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> manufacturing. So as you're talking to your suppliers, you should also be doing manufacturing. Talk to your manufacturers. Your manufacturers might want to do supply for you. It will cost more. They will buy from places that cost a lot more than what you can find. So getting a manufacturer, uh, we have manufacturers in both China and America, and volumes of 1K to like a little bit lower than 10K. So both, we found manufacturers in both places that support these volumes. Um, a lot of places will say China only does like, you know, very large orders. That's, we have found that to be particularly true. Uh, when you send in your files for production and for quotation, ask them for all their cost of bonds. They should give you something very similar to this. I like this one a lot. They give me profit, like how much they are actually making. <laughs> you might not be able to get that, but you definitely should be able to get how much your components and your PCBs and your assembly are costing. And that will basically tell you the profit. Uh, questions to ask as you're selecting a manufacturer, kind of want to be in their typical client volume rate. 
Uh, you don't want to be like a small fish. They don't care about you at that point, and you don't want to be really pushing what they can actually do. If you need special testing, FCC stuff, you should ask them to make sure that they've actually done it before. Sometimes they might lie, so be aware of that too. Uh, sometimes well, a lot of manufacturers, especially assembly shops, only do assembly. They outsource all their PCB manufacturing. If you want to lower prices, you can do the PCB supply yourself as well. Uh, most importantly, if things go wrong, know who you will be interfacing with. Are you interfacing with the project manager that's in charge of your project, or are you interfacing with someone higher up, CTO, CEO? Uh, if you're really high on their sales volume and you're a really good client for them, you can probably get better pricing and have things resolved quicker. So China versus America uh, is a thing that I was really confused about. A lot of people were telling me varying things. Um, we ended up getting quotations from about 10 to 15 manufacturers across both regions. Um, the costs mainly fall along anything that's Chinese-based is cheaper than anything American-based. Americans with Chinese offices are, I've always found them to be more expensive for some reason. I don't know why, they just are. Um, China's really good at doing DFM and doing <laughs> workshops. America's really good at English, so you know, if you can speak English, it's really easy to communicate with them. Pick your poison. Uh, after you selected a manufacturer, hopefully this is the time when you do a pre-production run. Always do a pre-production run. Do not just make like 15,000 things at once. That is such a bad idea. Normally, even if you try to do that, they will insist on doing a pre-production run. And during the pre-production run, you're basically looking for quality, how good are the things they produce, um, communication. If things go wrong, do they actually understand English? If they don't, you probably switch to Chinese. Um, test process. Uh, if possible, give them your test rigs. You can run through all the test rigs as well, because if they need to test all of a sudden a thousand things and your test rigs aren't working, that's going to delay production schedule. And eventually you're going to need to go to production. Uh, it's terrifying. There's going to be a lot of fires. Things are going to go wrong. Things that you never expected to go wrong will go wrong. And basically at that point, there's <laughs> nothing you can do except for try to put them out as best as possible. So this is what has kind of worked for us. We haven't gone to the flames yet, so maybe it'll work for you too. Your mileage may vary. Questions? This was awesome. Any, uh, any questions? <laughs> yes, over there. Andrew. Well, that's my view. So there are companies that actually specialize name, name in it. companies. Sorry? Just, Just your name and company. Oh, my name is Marco Perry de Cohen, and my uh, company is Mindweaver. Um, my question was, there are, so there are companies that are, like you said, uh, Chinese-based, but have an office in America. Um, there is one particular company, I'm not going to name, but um, for example, they uh, source, a, they have a network of PCB manufacturers, and assemblers and uh, do, do all the sourcing and stuff. Um, your experience, uh, have you ever had dealt with these types of people? That are, uh, do you think it's actually worth the time to go and uh, source everything yourself, especially if it's a pre-production? Um, pre-production, we don't source everything ourselves because you're making like 10 units and the marginal benefit you're going to get from trying to source units of 10 are not good. Um, but pre-production runs for us are normally using stock of production. So we're not sourcing separately for pre-production. So it's different sourcing for prototyping, where we're just buying whatever's available, and for actual production, which pre-production is a part of. So, so I was kind of touching on uh, these kind of companies that do small, the small runs. So they'll do small runs between 10, 10 pieces and 10,000 pieces. So like, you can actually scale that. Um, but basically, the, the, the real question is, how do you transition from the prototyping the components that you're using to production paper? Is that just by using uh, products, uh, uh, component swaps? Yeah, and mainly um, it's, it's a few component swaps, sometimes PCB, like slight PCB changes for the component swaps. Um, we, we tend to not like to change much between, like if we don't have a prototype version of what it will look like in production, 
we don't even go into pre-production because that will just be a hassle like even sourcing all those components in the first place. Great. Thank you so much. That was terrific. Thank you.